going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. Today I'm be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. Okay, so there's not a lot to this whole kit. Basically, it's Vaporesso's new jammy called the Gen. Not related at all to the Gen 2, the Gen 3, the Gen 3 Triple, the Gen 3 Dual. Has nothing to do with that because, well, those were Wismec. This is actually Vaporesso. And I really don't know what else to say from this aside from just being a dual battery jammy. Have not taken it out of the box. However, uh, this has no cellophane on it. I want to say that I was sent this, and that's why I said it in the beginning. But I may have purchased this. But if I did purchase it, I would have never taken the cellophane off because that's kind of what I do now. And the reason why I do that, why I leave the cellophane on, is because that leaves no room for option. If something's dirty, right? People are always wondering, how are things always dirty, Jay? When you get them, it doesn't make any sense. It's awkward that everything is filthy. It's got potato chips on it and birthday cake. It doesn't make sense. Listen, I don't even buy from the same place. There's a multitude of different places that I buy from from all over the world. Even if it's a product that's going to be coming to the U.S. market, if I could pick it up from Frencherland and it's quicker, I'll get it from there. I don't care. I think the biggest problem we have is this whole quality control thing. I was watching a guy on a video where he was talking about that whole lipstick scenario with, oh my God, what was her name? Leslie Mackey? I don't know. But she had like fuzzies and black dots and mold and all this other shit inside of the lipstick and she was getting a lot of shit. And one of the points that he brought up is when you're making so many of one product, what happens is it starts to lack. Not starts, the whole time it's lacking in quality control, meaning that nothing is checked. Now I get it, typically in the United States when something is quality assured, they'll take 300 of them and then take 10% out, pick them up, look at them, be good to go, then put them on a truck, ship them out. That's gonna be difficult to do with vape stuff just because they're so, many made. Jaclyn Hill is the name that I was thinking of. So that's typically the problem with the whole QC or the Q&A is that it's very, very difficult to check. And I'm not excusing that, but if they had better standards, then we wouldn't have to be worried about whether or not something is going to be filthy. And I think a lot of the times what happens is, is reviewers don't pick this up because they'll take it out of the box and they'll clean it or they'll use it out of the box and then they'll give the review after they've used it. So they don't know how to deter the difference, whether or not that's the way that it was outside of the box versus that's the way that it is now after using it. So without further ado, Vaporesso Gen Dual Battery 18650 box mod. Let's flip it. The Vaporesso Gen power isn't just for the pros. No idea who came up with that. And then on the top of the box, Vaporesso on the side, Gen on the other side, nothing. This may not be the finalized package. It's very, very difficult for me to determine whether or not I bought this or I was sent it. I want to say I was sent it because this isn't for sale on any site as of the date of this video. On the back of the box, go ahead and freeze frame that so you can read it. Right here, they state the charging current, but I'd never really recommend that unless, of course, it has a built-in battery. It's not good to consistently run a current through the USB. If you're going to do it on the fly really quick, you know, you're driving somewhere and you got about five minutes to charge it, then that's totally fine. But a lot of times people will plug in a USB and then leave this charging overnight. And that's never a good situation. So let me open it up and show you everything inside of this box. Keep in mind that this is not a kit. It is just a mod. So in the bottom of the box, there is a little box and inside that box is probably going to be a user manual let's just go ahead and take a stab at it an envelope with a warranty card on the inside of it typically you usually fill these out and then send them in i really don't know anybody else that does that and then there is the actual quick response you know thinking about it i didn't get any kind of scratch and sniff on this I'm telling you they're doing away with it so you better get used to me just saying it smells like flowers or paper because that's exactly what the box is going to smell like. Then you get a user manual with Axon chip inside. I hear a lot of people talking about this. I don't know if this is Vaporesso's new thing because they actually used to do the Omni board. Something they seem to be pushing a lot of with this is the whole temperature control and it seems like a lot of people are getting into that again. Ugh, not a fan of that. It looks like it's got a bit of a gradient thing going on. More red here, more black down here. It's a pretty cool color configuration. Feels very, very nice in the hand. I don't want to say rubbery like a vapor shark, but you definitely notice it. And of course, you have gold on the top and you have gold buttons or gold button. And then is that a gradient or is that just me? Copper color button here. Not 100% sure if that's solid copper and then copper on the top. 
feels really good in the hand. It's kind of rubbery all over. Even though this looks like a metallic type metal, it's even rubbery up here. Like it has a very soft coating on it. 26 millimeter looks like it goes right to the edge. The problem you may have with a device like this, especially this color configuration, you're not gonna wanna use a stainless steel or a black dripper. You're gonna wanna use something that's red or like a reddish black like this or copper. Very difficult to match things like this. The interior of this, so it looks like Vapor Resto is getting better at this. Axon chip, and then there is your battery orientation listed on the tray itself. Positive here, negative here. Holy cow. Caution, do not use batteries with broken skin. Please use high rate discharge batteries, 35 amp and above. I don't know a lot of batteries that are 35 amp, unless of course they mean pulse and not continuous, but 35 amp? Oh, well, the little battery slipper slider doesn't fly out and hold down the door. I can't tell you how many times I've done that and I've had to cut the whole ribbon. Lost Vape is really known to do that. And there's the screen. Two hundred and twenty watts, and it does not round robin back down. It literally goes in a one watt increment. What they should have done was at twenty to fifty goes up by one watt, and then past that it goes up by five. The longer you hold it, there's been a couple where you can actually change it to adjust that, but I'm not sure if there is any software for Vaporetto to adjust that like there is with DNA and eScrab. To lock the mod, one, two, three. You'll see a little lock down there in the corner. One, two, three, to unlock. Over here on the left-hand side, you have your battery graphical display, 100%, the resistance of what you got, the last hit of how long it was, the watts, obviously, and pull, I'm assuming they mean pulse? So the way that their pulse works is kind of the way pulse width modulation works. And I don't know if that was their attempt to make it more of an effective hit, but every 0.2 seconds, it will give that power. So almost like ramping up the coil really quick and then bringing it right back down. But we're talking very two tenths of a second, quicker than you blink your eye. Okay, so you have your pulse mode, which we just went over, and then you have your economy mode, saving battery life. Smart TC, temperature control, do it yourself mode, and then system set, which is where you're going to access everything about this on the inside. In your system set, you're gonna have a couple more options, your puff counter, which is gonna show you how many hits you have and the seconds. However, there is no way to put this on the main screen. You're stuck with the time. Once you have that set, then you could do brightness, which adjusts the brightness of the screen. The flip screen flips it around, and then default's gonna reset this back all to default settings from the factory, and then version is the firmware version that's on the chip itself. Wait a minute, isn't this the same name of the cameras that was used in that whole Chris Watts thing? Axon, Axiom? Screen seems a little bit dated for what this is. I don't know why they're just not adding a little bit more color. Well, I do because it would make it that much more money, but it would be nice if you could change something. Seems like we're going back to this whole basic. So on the coating of this, it's supposed to be scratch resistant and flame resistant. I don't wanna say flame proof, now, I don't recommend you to burn anything like toast it up, but I wanna see how much of a scratch resistance this is. Let's be realistic. Let's take it on the side here and just, wow. And uh, keep in mind that this is, I'm gonna dig into this here, hold on. Okay, so keep in mind that that was very, very deep. Here where I'm scratching it, you see that? So if this is in your pocket, Wow. And we're gonna take a razor real quick. Well, it's not good with the razors, so <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why you have a razor blade in your pocket, but if you did, you, you should be all right for a little bit. This is razor sharp, hence. I'm gonna take the battery out for this because I don't wanna fucking roast my fingers. And here we go. Wow. So if you have a burning campfire in your pocket, you should be good to go as well. I don't. <laughs> wow. 
why would this be flame proof? Isn't everything metal flame proof? <laughs> uh, so we're looking good here. Whoa. What is that? That letter just showed up. Does that say Jen underneath? You better shut your face right now. Dude, that says Jen underneath. You see it? G E N. Jen. Seventy-five watts. Nothing on the top. Let's bring it up. Back on top of the Vaporesso Gen Gradient Box Mod. Now, I didn't know what else to put on top of this, so we're just going to run with this whole black and red configuration with the black dripper on the top. 75 watts, asking for a new coil, of course. It says, oh man, that was cool as shit. I can't say I've ever seen that before. Hold on a second. All right, so picking up nothing, check Atomizer, check this shit out. I hope this picks it up. New coil? Yes. Scanning. Okay. It's the little things, you know? Is it really scanning? No. <laughs> Does it sound cool? Scanning. Voicemail. It's pretty awkward the way that this hits. It almost hits like a PWM. Okay, so if you're interested in what a PWM, something with a potentiometer has, how it hits, this is a great example with a digital display. I just did a review on something where it had a dial and I was like, how can we never see anything that's digital with a dial? I cannot remember that video, but what do you got? Zurich. The Zurich X, that's right. I literally just did this video four days ago. And now here we are with a digital. It's very hard to explain the hit. It's almost like, here's the vape, wait, here's the vape. Like that quick. Wow, that is weird. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up because you don't really use a lot of drippers, but it's, it's like a very hard hit all the time. I thought you didn't like rain dance. I like it sometimes. Oh yeah, you only like it for like a couple hits and then that's it. Yeah, and then I don't need to vape all day. Because it hits really hard, yeah, <laughs> it hits very hard. <laughs> if you've never used a potentiometer, I'm not 100% sure if you're going to be able to tell the difference between this and a regular type of hit. It's not that dramatic, but you kind of... Mm, it's so hard to explain. When you use a potentiometer, it's a very, very consistent hit. The best way to explain this is if you were to take a build, right? Put a build inside of a dripper or an RTA and hold the button down. What happens? is that coil gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and almost blinding. When you're using a potentiometer, it doesn't do that. It kind of gets bright and then cools down, right, and then goes right back up. Think of almost like a temperature control situation. Same type of deal, the way that this hits. I like it, I do. I don't like the color configuration. I don't like the copper button. And I, this would have been so much better if it was like a stainless, eh, see stainless steel makes a mod very heavy. And I'm assuming that the base metal of this is some type of zinc alloy. Black probably would have looked that much better, like a solid black. I'm not 100% sure if all of those are gradients like this, and I'm really not sure why, in fact, they made this flame proof. It has the appearance that it's much larger than what it is because it's so thin. Sig 150, you remember the old style? Just like that, but softer. If I was to rate this mod on a zero to 10, considering that the screen looks very outdated, I have to take a point off for that. I also have to take a point off because of the aesthetics on this. While some people use the argument as, oh, it's subjective, it doesn't matter. Listen, if you have something that matches this, then absolutely this is gonna be fantastic. But most people don't have a dripper that has that gradient type look or black with red splatter. It's just something you don't see a lot of. So if you have something that matches, I'm sure you're gonna look at this and say it's sexy. 
But if you don't, you may be in the same situation that I'm in, having a hard time matching this with anything. And why did they make the up, down, and select buttons the actual color of the mod, but the fire button is copper? Dot mod usually does this. This is a very, very big dot mod thing brass or gold button and then the rest of the mod is one color tough call man tough i'll put this in a 6.57 block i would go higher if this was solid black or maybe a black and white type hybrid and stainless steel button it's really aesthetics is the problem like this, the screen, the functionality is badass. That's why I'm going as high as I am. So all in all, if you're looking at picking up a mod, I don't know what the price point is. If this is at 50 to 60 beans, I think it's worth it. If they sell this for 100, no, mm -mm, not today, not even 90 or 80. 60, I feel should be the maximum for what this mod is. Again, I have no idea what the price point is. So I'm going to assume that I was sent this for the review. And I've kept it real. Have you?